information workflow, we can end up implementing technology. Yes, we can implement technology, we can implement, implement software, but we can, um, uh, we can mess up during the implementation. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. So that's why it's very important. Before, even before you implement a health information system, you have to uh, evaluate and, if possible, improve the health information workflow. So this is one of the first uh, components when we uh, implement uh, and when we have to deal with the infrastructure. The second component has to deal with the standards. When we want to implement health information system, we have to be very careful about standards. And in the healthcare sector, we have a lot of standards. In Peru, for example, we have, a, 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 we have a standards for exchanging data since 2005. So we have 17 years that we have already a, um, we, we have a regulation about how to uh, set up and implement standards. However, until now, those standards have not been implemented because of several reasons. The third component has to be the electronic medical record. The electronic medical record is uh, a very important and a critical component of the infrastructure layer because the electronic medical record collects all the data ar around one person. Since the beginning, uh, since uh, the data that is being collected when a, a newborn is at the hospital. And the, the, the recording in progress that is also uh, critical is the interoperability. The interoperability in a health information system has to deal with how to connect all the different software and all the different systems so they can exchange data. So if we implement interoperability, that might allow that a hospital that is in Lima, and we have to uh, deal with um, clinical or laboratory tests that we perform to a patient, then those results can be seen by another clinic or another hospital that can be in another region, can be in Arequipa, for example. Huh? However, the interoperability is still a, a work in, in progress in Peru. <coughs> Another important layer when we talk about the health information system is all the, the components that have to deal with the planning, execution, the monitoring, and the evaluation. This is very important because a health information system is not just implementing a software or an electronic medical record software. We have to carefully planning all the process. Since the, all the uh, training that have to deal with the health professionals, or if I am implementing a health information portal for patients, well, we have to deal very well with the training component. And also, if we implement an electronic medical record, if we want to implement a telehealth service, we need also uh, to monitor and evaluate the process of implementation so we can uh, fix or we can improve the health information system. And in addition to complete this digital house, we have uh, two important uh, components. On your right, you can see all the uh, factors that are um, uh, uh, a critical component of the health information system that has to deal with uh, governance and leadership. Leadership is critical because uh, when we implement a health information system, um, all the uh, CEOs, the directors of the hospital have to be involved in the process of implementation of a software or, or a telehealth service and so on. And the last component that is on your left, but last but not uh, uh, at least, we need to take care very carefully of, of training human resources. 
training human resources that have to deal with all the health information system is one of the most important uh, components that we need to take care of when we implement a health information system. And even in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, we see that this is even more important. That's why talking about training human resources is an important uh, issue for this conference, for example. When we talk about training human resources, we not only talk about the medical doctors, the nurses, the uh, obstetricians that have to deal with patients. When we talk about the, the training human resources, we also talk about training the leaders, training the managers, training the director of the hospitals of, or director of clinics, because they also have to have clear concepts and they have to have clear about the challenges that have to deal when implementing a health information system. It's not just implementing a software that will uh, work like an Excel or like, like a statistical software. This is a very important um, uh, issue when we talk about uh, training human resources. And when we talk about training human resources, we have to deal also with training patients also. We need to also train patients so they can be more literate. We, when we talk about health information system and we uh, experienced that in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, patients have to uh, contact with doctors if the primary healthcare clinics, as it was the case in Peru, they were closed. We closed pretty much all the healthcare primary centers here in Peru. So uh, patients um, uh, didn't go to the, to the primary care clinic. So telehealth was the only way to see a patient. But patients, for many patients in the COVID-19 pandemic, was the first experience contacting a physician or contacting a nurse through a device like a cell phone. So uh, now it's even more critical to also set up training programs for patients or for users so they can know how to not only use a device because you know many people know how to use a device but all the context that is involved in a clinical or in a in a medical doctor or in a patient doctor relationship in the context of the patient and doctor relationship is not only the device, it's not only the technologies, it's other issues, important issues such, such as uh, all, the, uh, all the process involved in the informing consent, for example. You know? Patients need a preparation before a medical encounter so they, ca they, they know how to proceed uh, uh, during the, the clinical virtual consult. Okay, saying that, uh, next slide, please. Okay, this conceptual model that um, the Ministry of Health um, passed in 2012, it was later explained in a paper uh, that is uh, published in one of the Medline and Scopus indexed journal that you can see uh, at the bottom of the slide. The paper is in Spanish, but uh, you can see uh, the, the, a careful description of all the components of the conceptual model for strengthening the health information uh, systems in Peru. Next slide, please. Remember that uh, the conceptual model and the digital house that the Ministry of Health uh, published in 2012, now the Ministry of Health adopted that conceptual model and in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, specifically in October of 2020, uh, the Ministry of Health released the Peruvian Digital Agenda 2020 and 2025. And as you can see, they 
pretty much maintaining all the uh, conceptual model of the, uh, of the initial proposal by the Ministry of Health. So you can see all the governance and leadership in, in your right. You can see the first layer, the foundation layer, that is the inf infrastructure. Then you can see the next layer, the foundation layer also, that has to deal with the e-health infrastructure, the electronic health infrastructure. So you can see the standards, you can see all the components of the privacy, security, the confidentiality that have to uh, deal with all, that have to uh, deal with uh, health information, and the interoperability. You can see also the planning, the monitoring, and the evaluation of a health information system. And you can see all the different process uh, in health, from, um, from public health to clinical encounter, and even knowledge management. And the last component is all the components that have to deal with the people and the culture. This is extremely, extremely important because, as I said before, we can have the best technology, we can have the best computer system, but if this system is not well developed and is not well implemented and well tested with people, then um, the health information system uh, uh, my, my, be, my failed, and, and that, will be, uh, uh, that will be very risky. And also, the component of the people component have to deal with culture, and culture is very important because uh, an implementation of a health information system or any system that, that don't consider the culture component also can be very risky. One health information system, let's say one electronic med medical record that works very well in, in a clinic in Lima, might not work the same electronic medical record in Arequipa, for example, because the culture is different. And culture might influence significantly in any uh, process of implementation of a health information system. That's why that's why all managers, all uh, directors of clinics or directors of hospitals have to consider very well, for example, all the uh, components and all the issues regarding change management. Change management is an important issue that has to deal with all the uh, managers, uh, CEO, uh, and so on, uh, because um, considering the change management and considering all the uh, culture uh, make a project be successful or not. Mm -hmm. The Peruvian Digital Agenda, you can see also in the link that is at the bottom of the slide. Uh, well, this slide is in Spanish, but uh, as I mentioned before, um, uh, you can see also uh, uh, a paper that is related that also uh, has an English version. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Excellent. So um, now we will review three examples of how the health information system in Peru has, um, has been developed. And one of the most remarkable health information systems that have been implemented so far is the first component of the electronic medical record. The first component of the electronic medical record is the birth information system. The Peruvian birth information system before uh, 2012 was um, uh, made by paper. So we only had um, paper-based registries of, of newborns. Uh, that was very difficult to deal with because we have incomplete data, we have um, uh, also problems 
when try to aggregate all this data coming from the different health care centers, both at the rural areas and in the urban areas in Peru, uh, we in Peru have a very diverse uh, geographically uh, uh, country. So for many cities, for many cities and for many regions in Peru can last even several months until we receive all this data at the Ministry of Health. So before 2012, pretty much all the child's birth uh, were collected uh, in paper. Mm -hmm. And it can last several months until the Ministry of Health uh, got those data. Um, at, um, at, the, at, at the year uh, 2011 and 2012, the Ministry of Health, in coordination with the National um, Identity Registry and in coordination with the National Statistics uh, Institute in Peru, um, develop one electronic um, health information system in Peru. The electronic, um, the electronic system involved the, the development of our uh, electronic registry of child birth, call it uh, Certificado de Nacido Vivo en Línea, which allow pretty much in real time and pretty much at the, at the same time that uh, uh, a child was birth to register the, the physician or, or the obstetrician can register at the, at the same hospital um, all the process and the data regarding the childbirth. birth. They, they went into electronic system that has, that has proper, um, proper IDs for the physician and, and for the obstetricians. And all that data that, that was collected at the hospital, on real time, the Ministry of Health can see uh, and can uh, uh, visualize all this data. Not only that, that was also the first uh, registry, the first electronic registry at the Ministry of Health that all the different sectors of the healthcare sectors in Peru use that system. Saying that, not only the Ministry of Health, but also the social security system, the army force, and all the private clinics in Peru uh, use that system. This, this system is being used until now. And this is pretty remarkable as well because, as you might suppose, many of the software and many of the system change over the time. But this uh, system that is being used by all the subsectors of the healthcare system in Peru um, are still using this system. Uh, another thing is that as we are collecting all those data in real time, we can see, for example, when a child was born with very low weight. Uh, uh, a baby with a very low weight, as, as you can suppose, is uh, at very high risk of developing different kind of complications. That's why it's very important to implement uh, that system uh, as soon as possible. When uh, when we were developing that system back in 2011, uh, many people said, well, well, you want to implement an electronic uh, birth information new system in Peru, but still not all the hospitals and not all the uh, centers that, uh, that deal with uh, child-born in Peru has internet access because you need internet access to connect to the, to the system. But we developed a, um, a plan with, um, that, that, that make the, the implementation to be progressive. So we, and we started, of course, with a hospital with the high numbers of 
a child born in Peru. Mm -hmm. But still, we are still implementing that system because as you can see, still in many rural areas when we have primary care centers that, uh, that also uh, attend child birth in Peru, don't have, still don't have internet connection. But those are very few right now. The vast majority of healthcare centers that deal with uh, birth uh, system in Peru already have implemented the, the electronic uh, birth information system in Peru. And that's also very useful because as we have the data pretty much in real time, we can conduct uh, data analysis and we can also conduct research. In fact, many of those data that is being collected by the Peruvian Birth Information Electronic System in Peru is available through uh, the Open Data Repository. So everybody, uh, many of the students that are here and many of the faculty and researchers that are following us through the internet, you can go to the web page of the Ministry of Health and then you can click on the, on the repository and then you can download as open data uh, much of the data from that is being collected from the, from the electronic birth information system since 2012. And this is a clear uh, example of how collecting real-time uh, information can save lives. Because if we detect that uh, a child with very, very low uh, birth weight is in Arequipa or is in another region, we can send alerts to the director of the hospital so he or she can coordinate quickly with the network of hospitals so they can uh, attend and resolve the complication, the complication of the baby. Next slide, please. For implementing uh, that, um, that system, also we have a process of training of healthcare professionals, not only physicians, but also uh, obstetricians. In fact, we not only train them to use the electronic system as users, we involve the medical doctors and also the obstetricians in the developing process of the system. That's because we have, um, that's why because also all the component of user interface is also a very important component when we deal, uh, especially with health professionals, because they, they are very busy and, and they um, and they are uh, pretty much uh, uh, working in several places uh, all day. The second example that I want to share uh, that I also have to deal with health professionals and have to deal with uh, a training process of training uh, medical doctors and so on is uh, a project that initially um, started as a research process, uh, as a research project initially funded by the Inter-American Development Bank. The, the project was named Wawa Red. Wawa in Quechua uh, means baby. Um, the idea was to uh, connect pregnant women through the use of cell phones, connecting with um, the healthcare team at the hospital or at the primary health uh, centers through uh, the use of a, a mobile health platform that involved the use of uh, short text messages. So, so through the use of um, short text messages, the healthcare professionals send reminders and send useful tips for uh, pregnant women that that information were linked with the electronic medical record. That electronic medical record initially was implemented in Callao, that is very close to Lima, the capital of Peru, but then it was implemented in other regions as well. Later on, so, so the project was implemented from 2010 uh, to 2015. But later on, when the project uh, finished, um, the project involved um, 
uh, a randomized controlled trial, so we wanted to test if the pregnant woman that received those text messages with reminders, with useful tips uh, for, the, um, for their pregnancy, works better or develop better than a pregnant woman that didn't receive text message and, and they were not part of the intervention uh, um, uh, component. Uh, in the randomized control trial that the, the citation is uh, in the, at the bottom of the slide, we show positive results and the pregnant women that uh, received the intervention um, developed uh, better regarding uh, uh, some of the uh, clinical outcomes that we evaluate. So the, the, the project finished and, and we, um, we got a positive results. Both our patients, let's say the pregnant women and the health professional were, um, were satisfied with the system. The pregnant woman liked it to receive the short text message. They, um, they, uh, they say that the text messages were friendly and were useful. In addition, the, the health professional also liked the interface of the electronic medical record and they uh, also perceive that uh, uh, entering data in the electronic medical record save minutes, valuable minutes for them. So the, the project finished, we, we got positive results, but then the Ministry of Health um, uh, incorporate the system for the, as the national um, as, as the national registry for following up uh, pregnant women. That was an important uh, step that was uh, um, incorporated in 2017 by a ministerial resolution. So this is also a clear example of how a research project that began with some funding by uh, in this case, an international funding. Uh, but this is clear a case how a research project that can be developed by some of them, we have many students here in the room that start with a research project that can be, uh, can be as a thesis, or can be as a research project, uh, et, uh, and so on, then can scale up to a national policies. And this is important for health information system. We need much more innovation. We need much more uh, technology in the healthcare sector. In fact, the process of implementing technology in the healthcare sector is very delayed comparing with other sectors as, as bank, financing, and so on. So it's very important that we show positive results from a, uh, in, a, in a software on a, or in a health information system, then we try to scale up. And for that, it's very important to communicate our results to the, the government or the national agencies, in this case, with the Ministry of Health. Next slide, please. And um, when we talk about health information system, we talk about the importance of research projects that, that um, are developed by academia, by universities, for example. We talk about the importance of link academia with the national agencies, for example, the Ministry of Health, but it also to, to link with other organizations, for example, with NGOs. And this is the case of a partnership between the Ministry of Health and one of the uh, most prestigious NGOs in the world that is Partners in Health, originally uh, in Boston, United States, but in Peru they have a very important presence. This project uh, has to deal with a very huge public health problem here in Peru, but also around the world, that is uh, people that uh, live with tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is an infection disease, uh, basically uh, um, involving uh, the pulmonary system that traditionally, when we evaluate a patient with tuberculosis, uh, we need to perform an x-ray. So we have many uh, printed x-rays, no? 
And uh, the idea of that project was to develop an app. And when, when we just take a picture of the, uh, an X-ray, then based on an algorithm that is implemented in the app in the cell phone, it can recognize uh, abnormal patterns. You know? As we can see, uh, abnormal patterns that automatically recognize as uh, suspicious for uh, a, TV, um, a TV problem. You know? That was also developed in collaboration with uh, a US-based university, UMass in Boston as well. And all the process and all the uh, preliminary results were positive as well. Um, this is dealing with one of the current technologies that also uh, has a lot of room to develop and uh, a lot of room in, uh, in, in the process of linking with health information system that is uh, artificial intelligence. To support not only, as in this case, is dealing with the tuberculosis diagnosis and treatment, but also to support other chronic diseases like hypertension, like diabetes, and so on. So this still has a lot of room uh, uh, in the healthcare sector. Next slide, please. Um, if you are interested to read more about uh, the importance of building capacity and training for digital health uh, in Latin America, I invite you to read this uh, publication uh, of 2019, but still uh, many of the, uh, of the uh, issues are still valid. And also I would like to point out the importance also of international collaboration. Mm -hmm. And this conference, the fifth international conference on applied informatics, is an excellent example of these partnerships in which not only we have the chance to meet and, and, uh, and learn from experts, as the experts that we have today here in the audience, but also to have the chance to collaborate and to uh, exchange ideas and exchange um, uh, with, with um, colleagues from other parts of the, of the world as well. So for many of the students that are here in the audience, international collaboration and in general, collaborations in general are critical in your professional career path. Next slide, please. In the context of the COVID-19, many things have changed. Next slide, please. We have more technology. A lot of technology have been implemented in the context of COVID. Next slide, please. And one of the things that necessary have to change was the competencies. Competencies and changing competencies is a very important step because a medical student that were trained five years ago is not a medical student with the competence that we need right now. And that's why the Ministry of Health, the Peruvian Ministry of Health recognized that importance. And in 2020, they published or they modified the key competencies that a physician need to uh, incorporate. And for the first time, the, the Ministry of Health implemented a component regarding technology and innovation. In technology and innovation, this was a first good step, but it's not enough because they state that physicians or medical doctors, they have to use ethically, well, ethic, uh, ethics is a, is a very important uh, a component of also not only competency for medical doctor, for any, for any professional. They have to ad adapt <coughs> technology in different areas. They have to um, uh, make innovations. But also they have, they say that they have to manage all related with information and communication technologies in the different components of the telehealth. In telehealth we have four um, for um, different time of, 
of types. We have telemedicine, that is actually the uh, consultation between a physician or a health professional and a patient. We have telemanagement, for example, when one director of a hospital wants to coordinate with another hospital here on, in any part of the world. We have teleeducation, and, um, and we have uh, teleinformation for uh, patients. So, uh, in 2020, 2020, the Ministry of Health approved it, the, is the key component, the key competencies for physicians and nurses. Later on, next slide please. Later on, the Ministry of Health also include for the first time, included for the first time the component of innovation and technology, but for uh, uh, pharmaceutics, psychologists, nutritionists, and dentists. They also included the that, uh, for example, a psychologist need to manage information and communication technology and telehealth. But, for example, what is missed here? What is missed in the, in the competence for physicians and the competence here for, let's say, psychologists? That they need also to manage, for example, electronic medical records, or they have to manage the components of a health information system. So still there are mi missing many points uh, when we talk about key, co key competencies for health professionals, but it's a first step. So um, that's why it's very important also uh, include uh, digital competency for health for health care professional, for example, as, as a research area that can be, uh, can be topics for and ideas for uh, next papers that you might try to submit to the following uh, international conference on, on applied informatics. Next slide, please. And currently, the Ministry of Health is working, is still in, prepar in, in preparation of uh, key competencies for uh, obstetricians, social workers, biologists, uh, medical technicians, and, and vet uh, doctors. Next slide, please. Okay, so in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, also uh, training programs change. We, uh, as a Continental University, we, uh, uh, we submit a grant proposal for our national agency that is called uh, Fondesit uh, from the National Council of Science and Technology, and we got funds to implement the first uh, training program on data intelligence for preparation of epidemics and pandemics. We received um, uh, we receive professionals both from the public sector and also from the private sector. Um, we started the program in 2021, and right now many of the models are currently available through our uh, continuum education uh, program that is called Continua. You can see the you can see the website in at the bottom of the slide, and we offer different kind of programs, of online programs, actually. So not only related with telehealth and telemedicine, programs related to electronic medical records, programs dealing with data analysis uh, in health. Next slide, please. And um, this is one of my last slides, is uh, to to summarize some of the challenges and opportunities that we still have when we talk about digital health and the core component that, are, that, that have uh, all the training component and strengthening capacities of health professionals. So we not only have to deal, as I, as I mentioned before, about uh, providing training and developing diploma programs, master programs, PhD programs on, on health informatics or in biomedical informatics, uh, but also we need training programs for patients, training programs for users. For example, not only in health literacy, but also in digital health literacy, as I mentioned. In the COVID-19 pandemic, we also see uh, um, a lot of misinformation. 
we experience uh, an infodemic. Uh, many of the information that we receive through uh, WhatsApp, through the internet, uh, was wrong uh, information, and that can have negative consequences in health. Of course, we need to improve uh, uh, regarding the technological infrastructure. We need to work a lot on interoperability. We need more evaluation of our health system uh, programs, our healthcare um, uh, system software, and so on. And as I mentioned, uh, we have a lot of policies, but we need to implement that policies. And this is a key issue that we need to work also with the Ministry of Health and other partners, as I mentioned. Not only the Ministry of Health has a, a huge responsibility, but also we, as uh, uh, in academia, as, as, as part of a university, we can uh, collaborate in this process. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And uh, also, I would like to finish my presentation. Uh, next slide, please. I would like to chair um, for uh, some of the conference and workshop that have been um, that have been presented in, at, at this fifth uh, international conference of applied informatics. That there are also other venues that you can publish your papers, and I invite you to consider those two publications: uh, the Oxford Open Digital Health, that is still uh, receiving uh, papers. And next slide, please. And there is a special issue also uh, uh, dealing with a healthcare information system that is one of the key topics at this conference. Next slide, please. That is to submit to a special issue that is called the role of digital health for strengthening health system in low and middle income countries. The deadline for submissions is on February the 28th of next year. Um, and uh, we would like also to receive uh, papers from different parts of the world uh, dealing with healthcare information system and how uh, technology can improve uh, health. Next slide, please. And saying that, uh, I'm leaving my, my contact, the, this is my email, and I, I will be happy to interact with you also through Twitter. My Twitter account is uh, at uh, Walter Curioso, so I will be very happy to uh, exchange and also to share some information regarding health information system, digital health, and uh, the importance, of course, of the biomedical and health informatic workforce. Again, thanks to the organizing committee at the International Conference of Applied Informatics, and I expect that all of you have a nice, um, a, um, a, a nice perspective of Peru, and particularly in Arequipa, and I hope to see you uh, next time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Curioso. Please take a seat. Uh, without any doubts, informatics applied to biomedical could significantly improve the health care. However, significant gaps remain in Latin America, especially in our country, because of the wide and the rugged territory technological and sociocultural disparities between different regions, or still between provinces in the same region, are prevalent. Rural areas, where the promise and need are highest, are particularly deprived. I agree that there is an unmet need for training and building the capacity of professional in biomedical informatics, not only in Peru, but also in Latin America. Dr. Curioso, um, I, I have uh, Two questions. Uh, in your opinion, uh, which of the components of the, this kind of conceptual framework that you show us are the more important for implementing this uh, uh, information uh, health system? Uh, thank you, Henry, for the question. Um, 
I think it's difficult to select one component, but I think the message, the message that I would like to share is that uh, consider all the components of the framework is critical for achieving success when we try to implement health information system. Because as I mentioned, you can have the best technology, you can have the best infrastructure, and even you can have a a, a, a good software, let's say a, a, a good electronic medical record, but if you fail uh, dealing with the change management component, or if you fail training properly your uh, health workforce, then your, your health information uh, system is on risk, on high risk, and it, and it, and it might fail. And all the millions that you might invest, or you might have invest in your infra infrastructure, and your in your infrastructure uh, might be on several on, on highly risk. So, I think the 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 message is uh, deal and plan plan on all of the components of, of, of the health information system, and and that is showing in the in the conceptual model to achieve. Uh, uh, high success. Thank you for your answer. Uh, the other question is about um, what do you think it could, be, it could be possible for the institution to share very sen sensitive information, for example, the clinical history of patient? Yeah, you deal with a very important topic. As I mentioned, um, all the issues that goes around the privacy, the security, and the confidentiality are very important issues. Um, not only regarding uh, following the laws, because we have a, a, a protection law on, on data privacy here in Peru, uh, but also, uh, and also all the, the, the technological uh, standards and that have to deal with data information security, but also uh, 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 train properly all the health, uh, the health care professionals on, on dealing with the importance of confidentiality, dealing with the importance of the process of uh, informing consent, for example, because those, um, those regulations are in addition and on top of all the electronic and technological uh, um, uh, issues that we need to take uh, care. And also, that is also uh, very important to uh, train and to uh, consider those issues when we deal with patients and users. Because as I mentioned, uh, uh, patients need to understand that uh, uh, a virtual encounter with a physician or with uh, uh, another kind of healthcare professional has to deal way more beyond the technology. You know? and, and they have to learn also how to not only protect their password or change their password, have to also deal to treat regarding uh, how to deal and how to uh, um, manage their own health information that, as I mentioned, uh, health information is, is, is a very sensitive uh, um, uh, uh, component of, of all the process of the, of the health information system. Thank you very much for your very interesting presentation, Dr. Curioso. Let's say uh, goodbye to Dr. Curioso with a low applause, please. We invite you to the next session at 11 o'clock, please. Thank you. Gracias, Walter.
we're going to try to use it. But in case that these things are coming out of time, we are going to just speak in, in English all the time. Uh, je sais qu'il y a une audience française ici. C'est pour ça que je parle maintenant en français. Et les francophones sont bienvenus. Um, vous, pouvez poser, vous pouvez poser les questions que vous voulez en français si vous voulez. Ici, si le système de traduction ne marche pas, ça sera moi qui va faire la traduction. Uh, je sais que uh, il y a beaucoup de gens qui, qui est branché, connecté depuis l'Afrique. Uh, et il y a les pays de l'Afrique qui sont francophones. Vous êtes bienvenu encore une fois. Merci beaucoup. Okay, now we need to know if the people presenting is here, because Ikai has a way of presentation that doesn't require the people to be present in the room, but the publications are done. So eventually, the people just send the book or the book chapter, and they don't show up. That's a problem that we need to fix. Uh, we will do it in the next sessions. This is the fifth, fifth section of Ikai. We have been in Africa, we have been in Europe, we have been also Colombia, well, many other parts in South America. I'm very proud of presenting today, and this is the artificial intelligence session. The first title is a genetic algorithm for scheduling laboratory rooms, a case study. I want to know if Mr. Rafael Punmayor, Martin Larrea, Mario Moncayo, Esteban Moya, Sebastian Trujillo, Juan Diego Ternus, Robinson Guachi, Diego H. Pelufo Ordonez or Lorena Wachi Wachi are present in the room or in the chat. It seems like they sent a video. Let me know, please. I want you to be a little bit patient because we need to synchronize a lot of things. People, some people send videos and we don't know who sent the videos and other people are supposed to be here. I'm going to go through the list in order to know if the authors are here. Um, the, the project called COVID-19 Artificial Classification Using War Embedding and Different Variants of Deep Learning Approach. Um, as I understand, they also sent a video, so I need, to com I need the confirmation that they are here. Crop classification using deep learning, a quick comparative study of modern approaches. The authors are here. No authors here. So, Flor, please, can you take note of the authors that are here or not? Internet of Things for Secure and Sustainable Healthcare Intelligence, Analysis and Challenges. The authors are here in the room physically. Multiple color detection of RGB images using machine learning algorithm. Joseph Bamedel Awutude, Sanja Misra, David Obagu, Hector Flores. Hector Flores is presenting actually in the other room. So uh, we need to know if the co-authors are here. These people are from Africa, so that's, that's going to be very difficult. Neuro model based similarity prediction for compounds with unknown structures. Um, Eugenio Borson, Leandro Ezequiel Di Persia, Matias Gerard. Any author here? What about in the room? Do we have the authors over there? I don't have any feedback from the people, so what do you think we should do, Flor? Okay. From oh, those videos are coming from India, as, as far as I know. That's going to be problematic because. The traduction needs to work online, and the videos are full of blah, blah, blah. And not that they are not interesting, it's just that it's too difficult to translate. Can we, can we project the videos?
Yep. Okay. Videos are loading. Okay, so it seems like we have now the authors online. Let me see the name of the people. We lost them. Okay, um, it seems like we have the people here ready for presentation. Um, as long as I understand, the people with the work crop classification, easy deep learning, a quick comparative study of modern approaches is here. So I see that Hindi Raki, sorry if I pronounce it badly, it's here. So you have the hand raised and uh, we are gonna give you the space so you can proceed with your presentation. You're ready to go, let me know so we can, um, actually you're already on the screen, so your, the screens are for yours. Go ahead, please. See, of course, I'm going to give you access right now. I didn't know the technicals were blocking you. Let me know if you can do it now. Okay, I'll let you know. Hello? Mrs. Hackey, isn't it? Can you just make an introduction of yourself from where are you presenting? So, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Hind Raki from Mohammed VI Polytechnic University, Ben Greer in Morocco. 
Um, I will start now my presentation. Um, good morning. Okay, so while he, uh, Mrs. Raki solves the problems over there, she's technical, I'm gonna ask you for patience because we have a lot of issues here. Her job, or his job, I still don't understand who's talking to us, is titled Crop Classification Using Deep Learning, a quick comparative study of modern approaches. Okay, so we should be prepared to see, uh, this is kind of a review, if, if I understand, I haven't seen the abstract. But um, if these people are gonna talk about modern approaches of deep learning, which is the most specialized use of artificial intelligence, I believe they are going to put together a lot of applications, or well, some of them that are the most substantial. So um, I'm gonna, again, open the screens for them. I guess the problems are solved. Please let me know if you already solved the problems. You can do it uh, on the chat. Okay, we're ready. I apologize for the delay. Can you hear me now? Hello? Can ahead, you hear please. me? Okay. So, good morning, everyone, um, jury, jury committee and the attendees. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we are delighted to share with you a brief presentation highlighting the most important outlines of our paper under the title Crop Classification Using Deep Learning, a Quick Comparative Study of Modern Approaches. Beforehand, I would like to bring to your attention a very intriguing question. How can we manage to feed ourselves sustainably, knowing that the mouths to feed are increasing still? Statistically speaking, even if the rate of growth of the world's population is slowing, but reaching the 9 billion soon is inevitable. According to UNDP, we are three times the size of humanity since 1950 and expected to hit 10.4 billion in 60 years, such scary numbers. Uh, can you imagine that there are almost 22 times more people facing hunger in the world than the entire population of my country, Morocco, where we are approximately 38 million persons? It appears that the food industry uh, contributes with very large numbers to greenhouse gas emission, especially industrialized animal-based products. One of the proposed solutions is to migrate towards more plant-based diets, which should reduce emissions. We hope that by 2030, we might achieve the SDGs goals and to do so, we must make advances in the field of automatic crop classification technologies for smart farming purposes. Deep learning has a promising ability to process images and detect patterns in big data with high accuracy results, especially for complex phenomena with CNN models. We should highlight that when investing in research and innovation, we are increasing agricultural productivity and shaping a sustainable approach for that matter, which is very important for the social and economic upturn that will help with more investments. And so the circle goes on. Um, the, our objectives for this study are as follow. Uh, mainly focusing on DL for crop classification type tasks with an emphasis on CNNs due to their performance in related fields. We intend to provide a preliminary framework comparative study for crop classification using deep learning, also to focus on the need for data pre-processing step. 
To that end, the data we used in this work is an unstructured type of data in the form of high resolution images of five different crops, jute, maize, rice, sugarcane, and wheat. So the task is to classify instances of data into the five aforementioned classes. To do so, we use the following pipeline. By feeding an input image of 224 by 224 by 3 size to one of the chosen architectures, which will be mentioned shortly, followed by two sets of dense neural network layers to have a 1 by 5 output vector. These DL models are ResNet, VGG, and Inception V3. For uh, splitting the data, we used a conventional method. Uh, do, do we have audio to the audience? Can, can you wait a little bit because we don't have presentation here locally? Can you can you pause it? I I am kindly asking you to stop it a little bit. They underperformed compared to the VGGs and inception models. This might be locally. due to the lack of pre-processing steps performed on the data. As mentioned before, this is the reported confusion matrix for inception B3 and both VGGs models. We can see that most committed error by VGG confusion is uh, it confused maize with sugarcane. This is due to the similar physiological uh, structures of the inception model. Both crops, this might which make it harder to distinguish because of their complex structures and similarities. Also, as mentioned uh, the before, confusion matrix the for the true resonance variance, variance matrix, which also confirms the underperformance of the resonance model, we can see study. that most committed error by VGG confusion is uh, it confused maize with sugarcane. This is due to the similar physiological uh, structures of the inception models. Both crops, this might which make it harder to distinguish because of their complex structures and similarities. Also, I'm hearing myself uh, the confusion matrix for the true resonance variance matrix, which also confirms the underperformance of the resonance model. We can see that most committed error by VGG confusion is uh, it confused maize with sugarcane. This is due to the similar physiological uh, structures of the inception model. Both crops, which make it harder to distinguish because of their complex structures and similarities. Also, I'm hearing myself uh, the confusion matrix for the true resonance variance matrix, which also confirms the underperformance of the resonance model. We can see that most committed error by VGG confusion is a uh, no. confused maze with sugarcane. This is due to the similar physiological uh, structures of the inception model. Both crops, which make it harder to distinguish because of their complex structures and similarities. Also, I'm hearing myself uh, the confusion matrix for the true resonance variance matrix, which also confirms the underperformance of the resonance model. We can see that most committed error by VGG confusion is a uh, no. confused maize with sugarcane. This is due to the similar physiological uh, structures of the inception model. Both crops, which make it harder to distinguish because of their complex structures and similarities. Also, I'm hearing myself uh, the confusion matrix for the true resonance variance matrix, which also confirms the underperformance of the resonance model. We can see that most committed error by VGG confusion is a uh, no. confused maize with sugarcane. This is due to the similar physiological uh, structures of the inception model. Both crops, which make it harder to distinguish because of their complex structures and similarities. Also, I'm hearing myself the 
Bien, como es mi deber decirle a la audiencia, tenemos un inconveniente técnico, lo hemos venido arrastrando desde hace rato, eh, entonces les voy a pedir paciencia, vamos a ver si podemos continuar, la gente está trabajando aquí, parece ser que los presentadores están escuchando a sí mismos. We have a technical problem here, we are trying to solve it, we have been having problems, uh, this is the first session, so usually it is like that when we haven't tested the system before. The people are hardly working here, so let's Bien, see if we can deber, continue with the session today. Una hubo poco de problemas yo aquí, entonces si le pongo la técnica, vamos a ver si podemos continuar. On est en train de travailler pour résoudre les problèmes. Parece ser que on va si on peut continuer avec la session et après, si on peut résoudre les problèmes techniques, on va continuer bien sûr. We have been having problems. This is the first session, so usually it is like that when we haven't tested the system before. No. The people are hardly working here, so let's Bien, see if we can deber, continue with the session today. On a eu beaucoup de problèmes aujourd'hui, donc c'est le problème technique qu'on a. Vamos a ver si podemos continuer. Oh, on est en train de travailler pour résoudre les problèmes. Parece ser que... Eh, oh.
de avoir beaucoup de problèmes. Ils sont, ils sont des problèmes techniques. On est en train de travailler pour résoudre les problèmes. Si les problèmes, on ne peut pas les résoudre dans les prochaines 10 minutes, je vais finaliser la session. Et au lieu de continuer à travailler comme ça, on va travailler pour résoudre les problèmes. Merci beaucoup. de avoir beaucoup de problèmes. Ils sont, ils sont des problèmes techniques. A case study. Again, we're sorry for all the inconveniences. Uh, we are going to proceed with the presentation. Here we have a video. I don't know if the translation system is working, the online translation system. We are going to present the video and we would like to know if there are authors present in this session. Do we have authors here? Can we see the Anyone raising their hand? Anyone owning this work? It's a case study. Again, we're sorry for all the inconveniences. Uh, okay. We are going to, present are going the to do the presentation and video. wait for the, the questions to be answered. Is working, the online translation system. We are going to present the video, and we would like to know if there are authors present in this session. Do we have authors here? Can we see the? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Genetic algorithm for scheduling laboratory rooms. Anyone raising their hand? Professor Anyone Mayor, owning Martín this work? Lea, Mario Moncayo, Esteban Moya, Juan Terneus, uh, we're going to, okay. we're going to do the presentation. Diego Peluso and Diego Peluso and Lorena Wait for the, the questions to be answered. Is working. 
the online translation system. We are going to send the video, motivation, and we would like to know if there are authors present in the session. Method of we have algorithm here. for scheduling the we see laboratory the rooms. Hello, can everyone. Study? Uh, can you study for a schedule, the preliminary results, um, anyone raise their hand, anyone who owning this work? Again, sorry for the delay. Okay, we're going to watch Diego Pelufo and Lorenzo Pelufo. The use of laboratory is of great importance for the training of more qualified professionals, proposed method of genetic algorithms for scheduling, Sometimes it represents a problem in some education of institutions. Okay, people, we are so sorry. Um, this work feels very, very bad because usually I present the AKI features event and it is never happened with the use of laboratory. Um, we have been trying several things to solve this issue, but we have problems now with the audio, we have problems now with the synchronization of the vision and the audio as well. So I'm going to end the presentation, the session is going to be ended here. Okay. If someone is interested in this, one of the titles that we were going to present will be very, very bad. I can't ask you to contact the authors and then you can talk to me directly. I'm going to solve the issue. We are really sorry as the Okay, we have been trying to organize so this has never happened before, but we have been now are going to keep working with the technical resources in order to avoid these problems happening in the next session. So, but this one is done. I will invite you to the next session. Some of them are going to do the presentation. One of the time you are in person, so this thing should sure happen. I can do that. And I'm talking about it. So we're going to have some presentations about the applications of the artificial intelligence. We have really Ya habla castellano, ustedes han visto que habla castellano, menos la audiencia del mercado. Ya les comentaré a los señores que van a keep working on the Africa, que es lo que los señores of all these problems. Lo siento mucho, presidente, esta sesión les voy a acabarlo aquí, porque los pueden ir a conseguir pasar si funcionamos o no. Son aparecedores. Esto nunca nos sucedió en el caso. Si quiero que se hagan presente, nunca nos sucedió. de inteligencia artificial, supongo que esos son los que les interesan a ustedes y serán presentadas aquí, como ya lo dije. Ahora me voy a referir a la gente que habla francés en línea, que son un montón, hay una cantidad de africanos allí. Por los francófonos, yo voy a vous en prie de nos excusar. Es la primera vez que esta situación de problemas técnicos recurrentes son pasadas aquí, a ICAI. Um, je viens de définir la session parce que on peut pas continuer comme ça. Il y a beaucoup de problèmes avec les sons, il y a beaucoup de problèmes avec les vidéos. Et c'est pour ça que je viens de définir la session. Si vous voulez participer à cette autre session, je vous en prie de rester là. Et regardez bien la programmation. Voilà. Je vous en prie de nous excuser. Nous espérons la que vous fois que ça restez ici pour regarder les autres sessions. Récord. Merci beaucoup. En passé ici, je vais me présenter. Je viens de finir la session pour regarder l'information bien fait. Les, les, les prochaines sessions sont quelques, quelques sujets sur la intelligence artificielle. Et voilà. En espérant que, que vous continuez à participer à la programmation. Merci, Merci beaucoup et à tout à l'heure. Voilà. Je vous en prie de nous excuser. Nous espérons que vous. Fois que ça...
that we perform in the United Nations. So it's very interesting because this actual is current. This is about how we use technology. And actually, should I talk in English? Should I do it in English? Is the people, the audience is listening to us? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna continue in English. Oh, so sorry, I didn't know you were here. Okay, okay. So this is about the very, very current topic of I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if you allow me. Sure. Okay. Okay, so this is, the title is The Cause of CO2 Pollution, Proposing a Holistic Solution to Fight Global Warming. Everyone knows, let me know if I'm going too fast. Just raise your hand and let me know. And you can interact with me, every one of you, okay? Okay, so the United Nations have defined 17 proposals for the 2000 theory. In 2000 theory, we must comply with all these things. They are supposed to solve the issue of societies regarding sustainability. Sustainability have 17 proposals. Well, you can see them over there, no poverty, very nice, zero hunger, very nice, but we focus in climate action, which is the purpose 13. Purpose 13 touches all the other ones. There are other proposals here, for example, water, and I'm gonna make clear what happened with water. Water is not an issue in our side. I mean, America is plenty of water, but there are other countries, the all continent or Europe, you know, other countries that they are suffering with the lack of water. Actually, Australia, some states in Australia are suffering with the lack of water. But the United Nations focus in sanitation, not the availability, but sanitation. Is it clear over there? Okay. What about the English there? Bien. Lo voy a decir corto en castellano. La, perdón, permit, allow me to speak in, in, in Spanish. Las Naciones Unidas han definido estos 17 propósitos como los propósitos para sostenibilidad. Ustedes ven unas cosas allí que puede que sí, puede que no. Nosotros nos enfocamos en el número 13, que es acción por el, por el clima, y el número 6, que es agua. Pero el agua, las Naciones Unidas considera que debe ser una cuestión de hacérsela disponible a todo el mundo. Nosotros acá no tenemos ese problema porque lo que hay es agua. Sin embargo, en otros países no hay agua y la que hay no es potable. I'm going to give you some indexes. Okay. I'm going to give you some indexes. What is the main problem? I'm going to be very, very slow here because I want you to understand what are the basics of this. This is a natural process that we exacerbated with our presence here. Why? The sun is giving us energy, radiation. Part of that radiation, some of that radiation gets reflected. You know, the globe reflects the energy. But because we are living here, and we are producing greenhouse gases. Those gases are located in the atmosphere and they block the reflection. So the energy keeps here warming the planet. Got it? Lo que ocurre, I'm going to do it like this. Okay. Lo que ocurre es que el sol está radiándonos completamente, constantemente. Alguna de esa radiación debería reflejarse pero que cuando ocurre esa reflexión, los gases de efecto invernadero se paran allí y retienen esa energía y eso nos calienta. ¿Ok? Levánteme la mano si no se entiende algo. Ok. So this, is, this, are, this plot shows the records of the century, the past century. And you see that this plot correlates with industrialization. When the countries start developing more and more, we start producing more CO2 and the CO2 rises the, te the global temperature, okay? You will see it over here, this is the whole century, a little bit more than a century, and you see the acceleration over here. This is the acceleration that happens when United States start developing so fast, when China start developing so fast, with India uh, developing so fast. So, I want you to understand that development is associated with CO2 production, and CO2 production is associated with global warming. That must be a highlighted message. Oh. 
desde hace mucho tiempo lo que está ocurriendo es que se calienta el planeta. Y ocurre porque nuestra producción hace que generemos gases de efecto invernadero. Este plot se correlaciona perfectamente en las partes donde se aceleró hacia arriba con la industrialización de los países. Ahí tenemos que incluir Estados Unidos, China, India, Brasil y otros. What are the consequences of having a very warm um, planet? Well, you will see that or you have seen that already. It's not the problem of the rain. The problem is that now it is raining too much. It's not the, play, the problem of, of snow. The problem is that snow nowadays is a big snow that can destroy your car. It's not the problem of the tornadoes. Tornadoes are exacerbated. I will tell you why. Because there is more energy. When you have more temperature, you have more energy in the ambient, in the atmosphere. El inconveniente no es un inconveniente de calentamiento. El problema ya lo han visto ustedes. No es que llueva, no es que eh, caiga nieve, no es que eh, tengamos unos tornados más poderosos en la parte alta de América. El problema es que cuando hay más temperatura hay más energía y esos fenómenos naturales cogen esa energía y se vuelven más poderosos, eventualmente volviéndose destructivos. Bien, people used to think that the only problem is CO2 and that's not the only gas. And I'll tell you this because those gases are present in day by day life. CO2, we produce CO2 now. In this moment, I'm producing a lot of CO2 because I'm talking, I'm breathing, and I'm producing CO2. You are producing CO2. Our processes produce CO2. But the big issue is that, for example, transportation, in order to come over here, floor uses an airplane. My father's over there. Thank you so much for coming. Mis padres están aquí. Muchas gracias por venir a mi papá. Muy orgulloso de eso. Paréntesis. Um, it, Everyone coming over here produces CO2 because of the displacement. Transport pushes to the atmosphere the 28% of the CO2. El transporte empuja a la atmósfera el 28% de los gases de efecto invernadero que existen. There are other uh, activities, human activities over there, that produce substantial, significant amount of CO2. Agriculture, industry, and commercial and residence produce 10%. Now we are in a critical moment because the big issue here with the CO2 is electricity, production of electricity. And people might say, well, let's put panels, solar panels. Well, that's good. The problem with solar panels is that still we don't know what is going to happen when those panels get exhausted. You cannot use it anymore. What are you going to do with the silicium involved in those panels, in the construction of those panels? So we still don't know the real relation between benefit and contamination. It seems like I don't need this anymore. Oh, for the people. Okay. As I told you, people used to think that CO2 is the only problem, but we have only methane, oxido, uh, nitrous oxides, and fluor fluorinated gases. What are those gases? Where are they present? They are present in the air conditioning that we are using here. They are present when you go to the surgery at the hospital, the fluorinated gases are the anesthetic, uh, the anesthetic gases. Got it? So we need to use them, definitely. Okay? So the problem that we are facing is very, very difficult. Ahí en la pantalla ustedes ven unos gases que son diferentes al CO2. ¿Dónde usamos esos gases? Esos gases los usamos cuando necesitamos enfriar este salón con el aire acondicionado. Ahí hay un componente que tiene fugas emitivas, eh, fu eh, emisión de fugas emisión de fugas que calienta la atmósfera. También aparece cuando vas al hospital. Cuando te ponen la anestesia, esos gases anestésicos son fluorizados y esos gases tienen emisión y afectan el CO2, es decir, la temperatura global. Bien. That's going to be a huge, a, a long presentation. How much time do we have? Okay. We are, we are going to go, let me ask the schedule, please, because I don't want the schedule to be perturbed. Okay, it seems like we have an hour. I'm going to keep you over here at 30 minutes. These are the contributions of the country. You see China, USA, as I told you, and the United, uh, European nations are pushing a lot, a lot of CO2 to the atmosphere. So they are responsible of getting the planet warm. However, Colombia, which is not here, pushes 0.5%. And we have a commitment. We proposed to the international community that we were going to get our CO2 
down 30%, 30% to 2030. And guess what? We haven't started yet. That's why we need the young fellows to follow us, to come with us, and try to help the planet, because this is not about just helping Colombia or um, Peru. Peru is a very advanced country regarding CO2 uh, measurement. The government of Peru, I have a presentation about your country, because in Latin America, you are the most advanced country. Well, I'm gonna say this in Spanish because it's very important for them. Peru is the país de Latinoamérica más avanzado en esto de proteger el ambiente. Su Ministerio de Medio Ambiente tiene un protocolo muy bien definido y las empresas han entrado en ese protocolo. No sé si lo sabían, ¿lo sabían? Arriba la mano. Bueno, espere que se me apagó esto. Keep with the issues. que tiene su Ministerio de Medio Ambiente, hace que las empresas se inscriban y consiste en darles estrellitas. Es probable que ustedes cuando vean una de sus empresas peruanas tengan una estrella, dos estrellas, tres estrellas y hasta cuatro estrellas. Esas estrellitas significan en dónde, en qué momento está cada una de las empresas en su intención de volverse carbono neutro. Cuando vean una empresa que tiene cuatro estrellas es porque ya pasó todo el proceso. Ahora, ¿cuánto dura eso? Al menos tres años. El primer año le dan la primera estrella únicamente por escribirse. El segundo año, cuando usted mide en su producción um, cuánto ha sido, su producción me refiero a su tarea principal, cuánto ha sido su CO2, le dan la segunda estrella. La tercera estrella se la dan cuando usted hace la comparación entre la línea base, es decir, lo que consumió usted el primer año y lo que consumió el segundo año y cómo es que va a mitigar eso al tercer año. Y la cuarta estrella se la dan cuando usted ya logra aplicar esas medidas de mitigación y se vuelve carbono neutro. Es decir, que en todo el año usted emitió menos que el año base. Recuerden que todos los insumos crecen. Entonces, mantenerse por debajo del año base, pues es un reto. ¿Vale? Cuatro estrellas. Cuando vean una cuarta estrella, compren, porque ellos son lo que llaman eco-friendly. ¿De acuerdo? Uh, the Peruvian government have uh, created a protocol, so the companies go very easy to, through that protocol. They give uh, three, uh, four stars. The first star is given to the companies that just get subscribed to the program. Second star is given when you make the measurements, what we call the baseline. Third star is given when you compare the basement with the current measurements. So you know how much you are consuming or producing. And the fourth star is when you manage to keep yourself, your production, below the baseline. Clear? Okay, so very easy. Oh, we are back, we are back. Okay, this is a comparison between the countries. And you see the production in 1990. In the 1990, you see the production is the dark blue line. And in the 2012, you see the emission. When I say production and emission is mostly the same, got it? So you see how the countries, in order to keep all these wellness, they damage at the end the wellness of everyone. I'm going to say this once, and it's very important. Regarding the water, a topic that I touched at the beginning, you can use your water, and if you damage the water, that's a, a local problem. Okay? You don't have water in Australia, in Queensland, that's a local problem, because water is local. But regarding the CO2, when someone makes a disaster in China, we suffer the problem. CO2 is global. You can, you can do the best that you can do in your country in order to keep the, the, the CO2 levels low. But if China, United States, keep producing CO2 in that level, that's a global damage, okay? It's different to the water. Compared with the water, we have a big issue with the environment, the CO2. These are the production and the pledges. Do you understand what are the pledges? 
Okay, pledges are like the promises. What the countries have said, they are going to save. Let's go really quick over here. You see Peru, as I told you, you are doing very well. Your production, which is here in blue, and this is your pledge. You see the difference? Your production is very low. It's like an average in the, in the continent, but your pledge is very high. That means that despite the fact that you are not producing a lot of CO2, you are committed to reduce your CO2 in at least, let me see, 30%, pretty much, 28%. That's a huge pledge. I don't know if you're gonna make it, but at least you are committed to do it. Su país es un país que genera relativamente poco CO2, pero han hecho una promesa de reducción muy alta, muy ambiciosa. Entonces, eso es bueno. Si lo van a lograr o no, yo espero que sí, porque al menos ya se ve que empezaron. Ese programa de las cuatro estrellas es gubernamental. La razón por la que ustedes no lo saben es porque esto no les aplica a ustedes. Desafortunadamente, yo pienso que debería ser una responsabilidad de cada ser humano, sino a las empresas. These are the pledges around the world. This is the situation, worldwide situation. The reds are the countries, all those red countries which involve my country, your country, I don't know if your country. Uh, those countries in red are the ones that pledge below the level. That means that their promises are going to keep warming above the level that keeps the life as it is right now. This is not say that, I don't want to say that the life is going to be ended. It is going to change. The problem is that we don't know how, okay? Lo que ustedes ven en rojo son los países que se pusieron por debajo de lo que deberían ahorrar. A pesar de que Perú hizo un gran esfuerzo, todavía está por debajo. Y eh, si la gente no cumple con esta promesa, entonces la vida no es que se vaya a acabar, simplemente cambia. Pero el problema es que no sabemos cómo va a cambiar y puede que ese cambio nos elimine a nosotros. Okay, this is a very important plot. This is based on science. This is not Fernando talking over here, and I'm, I'm not the one that created this plot. This is created by the IPCC. For the ones that don't know, uh, that doesn't know who is the IPCC, that's a group of scientists that make predictions using artificial intelligence, and they go backwards also to know the resources, to know the, the initial issue. In the prediction side, they already predicted how much we are going to rise the temperature of the globe. Got it? So this is very important. This plot is very important. IPCC means International Planet for Climate Change. This is what the IPCC says. We need to keep the temperature of the globe in 1.5 Celsius. That means that from 2000 to 2100, the planet should warm only 1.5 degrees Celsius, okay, or Celsius degree. But currently, we are in 1.2, and be aware that we are in the first quarter of the century. So we already hit the planet to a level that is beyond uh, what we expected to do. This is the Paris Agreement, as I told you, 1.5 in a century. This is where all the promises of the country, the pledges, are going to take us, 2.1. And this is where the current situation is going to take us, 2.7. That means that before 2050, which is your best moment for working, we are going to have an issue with the uh, temperature. Se lo voy a decir en castellano porque es muy importante. Estos son datos científicos de la IPCC, el Panel Internacional para el Cambio Climático. Lo que ustedes ven en rojo es lo que se ha calentado hasta ahora. Es el primer cuarto, ni siquiera el primer cuarto, y ya vamos alcanzando el límite compatible con la vida, que es la línea azul. Esto es lo que han prometido los países y las consecuencias que van a tener. ¿sí? Vamos a calentar 2.1 grados, y esto es... Estas son promesas, pero estas son las acciones. Las acciones hasta ahora lo van a calentar 2.7. ¿Qué quiere decir esto, señores? Que hacia 2040, 2050, que es el momento donde ustedes van a ser más productivos, van a tener que lidiar con esto. ¿Sí? Es muy posible que sus trabajos estén altamente influenciados por esto. 
Entonces, por eso es que ustedes lo tenían que saber y siéntanse privilegiados. Si no lo sabían, ahora ya lo saben. Pueden ustedes pensar lo que quieran, tener las proyecciones que quieran a futuro. Si ustedes no tienen que ver con esto, probablemente esos sueños que tienen, si no es que no van a poder lograrlo, van a, van a estar altamente influenciados por esto. ¿Listo? Ok. There is a business behind this. A good one. Billions. This is the cost of the green carbon, the CO2 bond, el bono de carbono. This is the price. And well, it's billionaire. Not millionaire, but billionaire. How they work? If you are a company and you save your carbon emission, you can sell it to other companies or in the international market. South America doesn't know anything about it. You don't know about it. Did you know about this? A little bit. But there are companies that are dedicated, consecrated to buy and sell CO2 savings. Esto tiene un negocio detrás. Oh, I'm going to say I'm going to say something in English before. Regulations because this is a regulation, they they are good intentional things. I mean, that's good. The quality regulation with this day, which is the IOC, I'm sorry, ISO standard. Um, don't remember 5001, something like that, makes the companies to behave with quality. Universities are also under the regulation. I don't know the name and the number of the regulation. But what happens? The regulations are your procedures. This regulation, on the contrary, the regulation which is called ISO 16074, this is the CO2 regulation. If you go through the process, you can sell at the end. So this is the only regulation that eventually gives you money. You know what does it mean? That's very important. Todas las regulaciones te quitan dinero, pero la regulación de medio tiempo, de, de, de medio ambiente, te puede dar dinero. Y eso es bueno, pero también es un problema. Y les voy a decir por qué. Porque la gente empieza a mentir. Empieza a reportar cosas que no son. Y mentirle al planeta es matarnos a todos nosotros. ¿Listo? Ya pasó. Por eso se los estoy diciendo. When a regulation gives you money, it opens the possibility that the people start cheating. People start registering things that are not. But when you do that, you are cheating to the planet. No? So it gives you money, but the planet is getting destroyed. So that's why we need technology, because when you set up the technology, the possibility that you lie is, is lower. It's not impossible, but it's lower. Okay. Prices, prices, prices. The water, very important topic of the water. I don't want you to fall asleep, but the water is, is crucial. The, the planet is the only alive entity that doesn't have a disposal mechanism. Whatever you do over here gets recycled, including water. 97% of the water is salty water, it's in the ocean. And 2% is fresh water. The 1% that I'm, that I'm missing is under the earth or is um, making ice. I mean, it's, it's in the ice. So only 2% of the total water in the globe is used to feed the humans, to, to, yeah, to be given to the humans. And that 2% is not disposed. You know, when you drink water, through urination, you just take it out. But the globe can do that. The globe needs to recycle it. So very important issue is to make it portable, I mean drinkable, but very important as well is to use it in a good manner. You cannot destroy water. It's only 2% for all the alive subjects, including the animals. OK. As I told you, Peru. Welcome to Peru, and thank you so much. You are doing very well. This is the process that I already presented to you, the, the, three, the four stars process. Um, I don't know if, I, if you want me to go through the whole thing, but it's a very nice process because the companies go very easy through them. This is what I explain you, how the companies go until the four star. This is a CO2 savings. Good things about the governmental tool of, of Peru. The 
companies go through the system in a very, very fast manner. You get to subscribe it, you make your registration, and there you go, you're ready. You gain your first star. The annual report is a standard, so it doesn't matter if you are in the business of the transportation, it doesn't matter if you are working in a hospital, it doesn't matter where you are working. As the report is a standard, you can always go through this, okay? The path to neutralization is defined with clear rules. Everyone, as the unit to measure the CO2 is a standard, everyone can go, even yourself as individuals can do it. Bad things. How does the company get to the annual report? Nobody knows. Companies are all the time struggling at the last moment in order to report. In December, you see them running like, I need this invoice, I need this, I need this, because it's an it's, it's a annual, annual report. Who guarantees that their report, what, what is reported is the generator? No one. We have processes called auditory. You see, some external people come to the company and they see, let me show, you report that in electric ener electrical energy, you consume this amount. I need to see the invoices that you pay for using the, the energy, okay? What happens is that you, as a reviewer, you cannot check all the details. You request, for example, the invoice of January and the July, and they give you that. So there is a change, a, a chance that in, in March you, you report something that is not. So that's the problem with auditory systems. They are not automated. Um, good things or desirable things. Emissions can be predicted inside the companies, and we can do it. Prediction involves artificial intelligence. So now that you came to see an artificial intelligence uh, conference or session, well, we're talking about artificial intelligence for the first time. And if we can predict the emissions, we can predict the cost. So that's very desirable. Okay, how that works? Very easy fashion. ¿Cómo funciona esto? Let me go with the English, and I'm gonna go to Spanish. The IPCC had created a protocol. You list your consumptions. Consumptions are um, ACPM, gasoline, the gases that are being used to free this room, all the sources of CO2. You list them. You go to the ICPP and you grab the emission factor. Those initial consumptions are in native units, milliliters, kilograms, liters, whatever. That emission factor is going to take your consumption to this unit. Be aware of this unit. This unit is the tons of CO2 equivalent. This is not real. This is a human creation, but it's very nice because everyone gets standardized. I'm going to say this in Spanish. El panel internacional eh, por el cambio climático define unos factores de emisión por cada una de las fuentes que ustedes tienen. Ustedes consumen gasolina, lo multiplican, gasolina en galones, lo multiplican por un factor de emisión y se mueven inmediatamente a algo que se llama toneladas equivalentes de carbono. Y ahí nos miden a todos. Ustedes también, como seres humanos, podrían tener unas toneladas de carbono asociado. Y es bien importante lo que les digo, porque esto se puede convertir en moneda. Ejemplo, van ustedes a Nike y dicen, yo quiero esa camisa. ¿Cuánto vale? Voy a dar precios locos, 45 soles. ¿Sí? Y usted dice, ok, pero yo tengo 200 toneladas a mi favor. Ok, llévala por 15. Se los estoy anticipando, así va a funcionar. ¿Listo? Esta unidad es una unidad de medida, pero es una unidad para todos. Y usted puede comprar en China, en allá quizás le compren más caro sus, sus eh, toneladas de carbono equivalente. Las que ahorren de la misma manera, ustedes pueden empezar a consumir más y van a tener el déficit. ¿De acuerdo? Ok. I'm going to jump all this thing and I'm going to give you a, a demonstration. Just to finish. Okay. I have been kind of humble, nice person. But now I'm, I'm going to become an arrogant presenter. He sido, he sido buena persona, chévere, pero ahora me voy a volver muy arrogante. ¿Y por qué? Porque es que esta herramienta la desarrollé yo. 
y ya ha ido por el gobierno argentino, ¿verdad, Flor? Ya hemos estado en el gobierno argentino. Esta herramienta está orientada a utilizar la inteligencia artificial, pero como a mí no me gustan las cosas hechas a medias, la hemos puesto ya en empresas. Es decir, que esto es un producto que nace en investigación y se transfiere al sector productivo. Y ya hay gobiernos interesados y tenemos varias cosas allí. Hacer transferencia en, en, las, en ciencia para nosotros los suramericanos es un problema, nos ha costado mucho. Somos muy románticos y cuando nos paramos del sector comercial, nos dicen esto no se puede hacer, esto no se puede hacer, esto no se puede hacer. Aquí está el abogado, el abogado y el abogado. Y luego cuando logramos solucionar el problema de los abogados, nos paramos en el sector público, es decir, con el gobierno. Y el gobierno nos dice, esto no se puede hacer acá. O sea que es algo muy valioso lo que hemos logrado, se lo voy a presentar aquí, para un hospital, porque un hospital lo tiene todo. Recuerden, desde carros, pero además el hospital tiene gases fluorizantes, esos gases anestésicos. Otras industrias no los tienen. O sea que estos están completos. ¿Claro para ustedes? Bien. I'm going to show a demonstration, and this is very important. And when I say that I, I am kind of arrogant, it's because this is science that has gone through all the path until commercialization. And we also have some public uh, entities interested in this. And actually, we measure in some public entities. And this is really important because transferring knowledge, transfer, transferring science from conceptual things to commercialization is very difficult to us, at least in South America. Got it? Clear? Which language do you speak? Both? On peut parler français ou? No, ok. Vous parlez français? <laughs> Je peux parler italien ou quoi? Quien habla italien? Ah. La idea es hacerlo claro para todo el mundo. The idea is to make it clear for everyone. So, okay, excellent. This is not my... Thank you so much, Flor. Gives me a lot of time, very valuable time. What you see in the screen is a hospital, and you see the processes in 2019 until now. Every year they need to report, and this tool allows them to report uh, when they were using like 40 people, now they can, they can do it, they can report with only five people. You will see it. I'm gonna show you just the results, and I'm gonna show you the scientific contributions because you will see this tool as a fixed tool. The power of this tool is that you can grab data from any source. It doesn't matter which is your industry and you will find this. Depending on the industry, let's say that we focus in transportation and you go to one company and that company works in a different way. So you need a software flexible enough that can go over there, grab the information in a coherent manner, and you, you also can go to another company in the, same, in the same group of companies in transportation and fix your software so it solves the problem of that particular um, company. And I'll, I'll tell you this, this is very important. Google, Facebook, Didi, Uber, all these companies that use artificial intelligence, they are power, powerful, powerful enough to invest. But if you want to move artificial intelligence to other companies, that's going to be an issue. The other reason why they can do it is because Facebook, we give them the data. Amazon, we give them the data. So they are very limited. When you want to open for universities, 
for uh, transportation companies, that's going to be a problematic because they don't give you the data. Actually, they keep, and keep, they keep the, the data hidden because it's the, the, in the data, you can see the keys of the business. So that's not going to happen very easily. Uy, casi me caigo. El problema, eh, tenemos inteligencia artificial para usarla en Facebook, en Google, en Amazon, en todas esas compañías. La razón por la que ellos pueden hacerlo es porque tienen mucho dinero. Y además, nosotros les entregamos los datos de manera gratuita a todas esas empresas. Pero si tú quieres moverte a una empresa del sector transporte, ve y pídele los datos para que veas. Tienes que darles algo. Este software que ustedes van a ver fijo para un hospital, trabaja para cualquier, para cualquier compañía. E incluso dentro de los hospitales, nosotros tenemos varios, varios clientes, eh, son diferentes entre ellos. Entonces, el software tiene que ser muy flexible. Esa parte de la flexibilidad del cómo no se las presenté. Pero les voy a presentar las, las producciones. Como nosotros cogemos todos esos datos, podemos hacer inteligencia artificial. Y eso se vuelve material científico. Ya voy acabando. I'm going to grab the 2020. And I'm going to do it because 2020 is very special. 2020 is the pandemics. So you will see the correlation between what happened with the pandemics and the use of the resources. And more use, more emissions. That's going to take a while because this software doesn't save information. Okay. You see, these people, they go with their cell phones and they see, okay, there is an emission over there. How much is that emission? They register here. And there is also some, how can I call it, IoT. Internet of Things, reading information and feeding here, okay, automatically. So you see what happens with the gas natural, the gas. This is the main office, I mean the main building of that hospital. The hospital had, has seven buildings, and this is the baseline. And you will see only in gases the correlation between, I'm going to explain you this. I don't know how to go over there. The, Orange line is the baseline. We went to that hospital in 2018 and measured all the consumption. And the other one is 2020, the, the blue one. And you will see perfectly what happens. This is in Colombia. When the government closes in March 2020, they close all the activity. And you will see that the consumption goes down in March. But in uh, July, Starting August, they open, and you will see the consumption going up. What is, what, what is very interesting here? The elements, the area above the yellow line is consumption. That means that you are consuming more than you are supposed to. I'm supposed to talk over here. <laughs> and the other one is savings. So you can commercialize that. That's money. That means money. Okay? We create the reports automatically so the company doesn't need to do anything. And now, because I can go through all the items of consumption, it's gone. Yeah, just to present the end of this process, we need to report what we do in science because that's the part that interests all the audience, even the audience that is visiting us from abroad. Okay, we are almost done. I hope this presentation was a good, replacement, a good replacement for the things that we couldn't do, and it was enjoyable. I'm gonna be done in about two minutes, and then I'm gonna open to questions if you want. Voy a terminar en dos minutos, y si ustedes quieren hacer todas las preguntas que quieran, háganlo. Yo espero que esta presentación haya sido un buen reemplazo de lo que debe haber sido la presentación, es decir, la sección de ICAI. Um, obviamente tenemos otras presentaciones, y yo voy a estar aquí al menos en tres ocasiones. Mi amiga Flor va a estar en dos. Héctor también va a presentar. Van a ser aquí locales. Entonces, 
um, pues yo creo que va a ser muy interesante, esos temas están todos correlacionados, son tecnología. No, 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 esta quítala, quítala ya. La... Okay, I told you that this software is, con, uh, is intended for research. So we have This is one of the products. Evalua, the software that you saw, is a, as I told you, it's a product of science. So we have, well, you see, everything is confabulated, so we don't show the message. What I'm supposed to do here, Hector? What I'm supposed to do here in order to close that message? <laughs> it's in German. The first one. Okay, thank you. You speak German? <laughs> okay. <laughs> As I told you, the software is already published. And I, I want you to know what is the difference between having a commercial product, that you just create a commercial product, and having a research-based commercial product. Quiero explicarle la diferencia que hay entre un producto que ustedes generan um, como parte de una empresa y un producto que se genera como parte de una investigación. A nosotros nos corresponde, como somos investigadores, hacer esto. Y es hacer que el producto se haga visible en uno de los publicadores. Este es el que el señor Héctor ha escogido y entonces pues, tiene cierto prestigio y para nosotros es muy importante. Entonces, ya les mostré la parte de investigación, que viene a ser esta, y la parte comercial, que es el uso que les mostré de ese hospital. Bien, tenemos otra cantidad de cosas y ya con esto termino porque de verdad que son muchas. Por ejemplo, esta. Ojalá nos vaya a aparecer ese. Bien. Este, this one is another project that is based on the data gathering of Evalua. And the most significant part of this speech that I'm giving to you is that Evalua can help you with your research. This is one of the professional teams in Cali, Colombia. Right? Professional soccer teams. I can explain you what happens over there in a very fast way. When the, the, the intention of this project is to know when the athlete, the player, is, gonna, is going to get injured by fatigue. So we have a lot of data in Evalua. A lot of data means how they train, how they eat, how much they run, things like that. And also something called CPK, which is in the blood, and urea. I don't want to go far with this because it's very, very robust. When you measure the CPK and the urea in the blood, you know the state of the, of the athlete, of the player. Why? Because the player usually lies. They want to play. They want to play the discipline. It's not exclusive for soccer players. But the blood says the truth. So when we keep those records, we know, using artificial intelligence, when the player is going to break. And that's the paper that you see about. That's a generalization of this use. I'm done by now, so I open for the questions once I explain this in Spanish. Esto es un proyecto de investigación basado en el centralizador de datos de Evalúa, que empecé hablando de CO2 y terminé hablando de deportistas. ¿Por qué? Porque es flexible. Nosotros recogemos la información de los deportistas y podemos predecir cuándo ellos se van a reventar por fatiga. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, aquí podemos meter cualquier cosa. Puedo seguirles mostrando usos de Evalúa, pero no vale la pena. Quiero oír las preguntas si ustedes tienen alguna. Ahora queda abierta la sesión para las preguntas. Even for those people uh, watching us from abroad, um, now open for the questions. Por la Yankee, de en otro país, ah bueno, Ilea Bocu. La sesión Ilea Uber por la cuestión. Merci Bocu. I, for example, I'm aware of a company that made electronics. And 
to be green, to be green, they moved all their production to China. So instead of manufacturing in the U.S., in, it, look, they could say, look, we're not producing any pollution in the U.S. anymore. We're not, um, you know, no greenhouse gases, no pollution in the water. Any idea? I mean, it, but it, like you say, it's a global problem. It didn't really fix anything, did it, to move it to China? And to, and it, I was going to break into Spanish there. It might have even made it worse. What's your, what's your name, doctor? Uh, Michael Doran. You are from? Um, the University of St. Thomas from Minnesota. Minnesota. Thank you, thank you so much for coming, and I regret that you have to see all these technical issues over here. We try to do our best. I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to tell the audience what was your question. If you allow me to translate. Go you ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, el profesor que viene de Minnesota nos dice básicamente que para qué medimos todo esto, no de manera peyorativa, sino que Toda la producción se mueve a China. Cuando usted es un país que produce mucho, se lo envía a China porque sale muy barato y entonces ellos producen allá y de eso viven. Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a solucionar todos estos problemas solamente midiendo? ¿Clara la pregunta para todos? Bien. Thank you so much for the question. I'm, uh, I have to use this because the people are there are listening. Well, that's a very nice question. You know, and I, I, I got a very, very simple solution for that. When you are doing something bad and nobody's watching you, most probably you are going to keep doing that thing in a bad manner. But when the people put their eyes on you, usually you say, okay, everyone is watching me, I'm, gonna, I'm going to behave. It seems to be like a non-technical answer, maybe, but when you measure what you are doing is to put the eyes of everyone on that country. China is obligated to report in 2030 their emissions. And they can use any tool, and they can even lie. But when you have IoT, artificial intelligence, and you have all the community expecting to see the results, you will see that they are going to behave. In COVID uh, times, COVID-19, I must agree, and you can agree with me, that there, was, there were a lot of lies. People start lying. They, they report an amount of deaths, an amount of sick people, and you know that it, it is not feasible, it's not possible. For the goodness or for the badness, Ecuador reported that the people were dying in the streets. Well, you go to the Ecuador and they talk to you and they say, it didn't happen. It was crucial, it was bad, but not until that extent. What I want to answer you in a very short manner is, when you can measure, you can solve it. You can responsabilize uh, China, United States, India. But if you don't know the numbers, that's going to be useless. Did I respond well, doctor? Thank you so much. Any other question? ¿Alguna pregunta los muchachos? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? No se corten, ¿ah? Que esto es para ustedes. Nosotros... Ajá. Ustedes les va a tocar. El desodorante no va a servir más. Va a ser un olor bastante fuerte. ¿Alguna pregunta? Adelante, por favor. Esta inteligencia, esta inteligencia artificial eh, solo funciona para el sector de hospitales o también podría funcionar para el sector minero. I'll translate. Ok. Uh, permíteme trasladar, ¿cómo se dice? Traducir tu pregunta para que ellos estén al tanto de todo. Y lo voy a hacer de cualquier manera, yo no soy oficial. Okay. Uh, the young fellow here asked me if this software can work exclusively for hospitals or it can do it in other sectors like minery, transportation and others. Did you sound well? ¿Sonó bien? Listo. Did you understood my translation? I'm becoming official translation. <laughs> Listen, um, I'm going to answer in English, or well, I'll do it in Spanish, and then I'm going to do it in English. Mira, el software está diseñado para que quepa todo. Lo que me faltó allí por una cuestión de tiempo fue mostrarte cómo es que nosotros hacemos en cinco minutos que el software se ajuste a la operación de alguien. Es completamente flexible. Funciona como la Matrix. Tú llegas, coges un archivo de Excel 
lo configuras para que haga ciertas preguntas y se lo tiras y listo. La, la herramienta ya empezó a funcionar para ese para esa particular uso. Claro, listo. Um, regarding this question, he says that if this software is fixed exclusively for hospitals, and I answered no. The part that I missed, that the part that I didn't show, is the part where we configure Evalua for following anything. Evalua can follow anything. It uses Excel files that you just put your questions, put your descriptors, and you push them. You, you just grab, uh, grab and push it over there, and Evalua learns. So in less than five minutes, you are ready to make any tracking of anything. And that's the power of this. Any other question? I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm not using, I'm not used to, I'm, they, they didn't hear anything? Okay, this part of question, we can skip it, isn't it? <laughs> Any other question? Please, go ahead. But we, you need a microphone, can you give him the microphone? The, pro, the problem is that the people watching from Zoom, they, they cannot hear you. Go uh, ahead. Yeah. So, um, and what kind of artificial intelligence algorithm do you use behind Evalua? So is it like a deep learning system or uh, what, what does it learn actually and how does it learn? So, or, or is it just a, yeah, maybe it's a more logical system or, yeah. Excellent, let me see if I catch you well. You talk about the electronics use and your question is regarding how we can apply artificial intelligence, isn't it? Is, is that the, the sound is horrible. So you, you are talking about this system, Evalua, right? Do, do I see it right? And you have like two papers uh, about it. Actually, we have like 10. 10, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you presented like two papers, right? That's correct. So, and uh, the question is, right, uh, you say in Evalua, um, artificial intelligence is used, and, and the question is, which kind of artificial intelligence? Excellent, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm gonna translate and then answer. El compañero pregunta que si eh, nosotros cogemos datos de cualquier compañía, de cualquier uso, ¿qué tipo de inteligencia artificial estamos usando? <laughs> I'm official translator, man, you gotta hire me. <laughs> uh, well, you see that the way Evalua works is going to give you results in a timeline. Point, 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 point. And I guess I already answered the question. You use artificial intelligence that uses timelines. You can use something called timelines, ne neural networks. But we have used SBM to classify, support vector machines. We, we have used for prediction, not linear regression, but polynomial, polynomic regressions. The most important thing and the message that I would like to give you is, we have the data. And this data is not synthetic data. It's not phantoms. It's real data for real companies. We have the data. What we are missing right now is the people that want to come over here, grab the data, and get something useful out of it. Got it? We need people. We need people. There are a lot of applications. We have the data. Did I answer your question? ¿Se acuerdan de la pregunta que hizo? <risa> Bien, la respuesta es la siguiente. Podemos utilizar una cantidad de algoritmos de inteligencia artificial. Como los datos se cogen dato en tal fecha, dato en tal fecha, dato en tal fecha, es una línea de tiempo con datos. A eso se le pueden aplicar artificial, eh, neur redes neuronales recurrentes para cualquier propósito. Se le pueden aplicar algoritmos de clasificación como el SBM, Support Vector Machine, Calerns, todas esas cosas se pueden aplicar aquí, eso depende de tu problema. Pero sobre todo, ah bueno, ya los hemos usado, pero sobre todo en timeline puedes hacer predicciones. Y las predicciones se pueden utilizar lineales, que serían muy superficiales porque tienen mucho error, pero puedes hacer unas regresiones que son polinómicas y esas se ajustan muy bien. ¿sí? Entonces, lo que necesita, como le respondí a él, lo que tenemos son datos. Ahora necesitamos son personas que quieran utilizar esos datos. Ah, sorry. Lo que tenemos son datos. Ahora necesitamos es gente que aplique y que quiera trabajar sobre esos datos. Y una cosa muy importante que le dije a él. Estos datos, si ustedes se meten en inteligencia artificial, van a encontrar un montón de librerías que son, bueno, yo tengo un poco, que son datos ideales. 
Entonces tú le aplicas, eh, si te vas a TensorFlow, hay un set de datos que se llama diabetes. Entonces tú dices clasificación de gente con diabetes en moderado, severo. Te sale perfecto, te sale perfecto porque esos datos son ideales. ¿sí? Están hechos para demostrarte. Lo que tenemos nosotros con Evalúa es que tenemos datos de cualquier lado, pero son reales. Este es el verdadero reto, coger esa información que es real y volverla algo útil. Y ese es el llamado para, sobre todo, la gente joven. ¿Es ok? Any other question? I guess I'm done. I'm exhausted. <laughs> okay. All set. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for the people. Uh, well, we have more people. No, participants have left, but that's okay because we have technical issues and we still keep the people hanged. It's, that's excellent. Thank you so much for the people coming from abroad. Merci beaucoup pour la gens qui est venu aujourd'hui. On se voit plus tard après le, le, le déjeuner. Merci beaucoup.